Hello and welcome to The Magic Detective. I'm your host, Dean Carnegie, and tonight we have exciting news. We have discovered Harry Houdini did not, in fact, die on October 31st, 1926, but in fact, he lived after that date, and we have photographic proof right now. First time on the internet, we want you to see. Take a look at this. I know, it's hard to believe. It's a, what? It, pho Photoshop? It's not, wasn't. Hi and welcome to the Magic Detective Show. I'm your host Dean Carnegie and what's that? Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in, Harry Houdini still dead. So the last time we got together I told you about punching Houdini in the stomach backstage at the Princess Theatre in Montreal, Canada. And um, after that, believe it or not, Houdini still did two different performances. Now, after they finished the last show, they all boarded a train to Detroit, Michigan, because Houdini had to appear at the Garrick Theater uh, the following day. On the train, uh, Houdini had a temperature of 102, and Bess was very concerned. They wired ahead for a doctor to meet them at the train station. Or Actually, I think the doctor met them at the, um, at the theater itself. Uh, Houdini refused to go to the hospital. He wouldn't do it. Um, he did. Uh, they did call his doctor in New York City, and his doctor talked to him. And and well, for whatever reason, Houdini would not go. There was a sold-out house there at the Garrick Theater, and Houdini was, uh, you know, the old-style performer. The show must go on, and the show did go on that evening. Uh, in 1926, except uh, Houdini was a mess. Of course, he still had the, uh, the the broken ankle, and so he wasn't able to do the water torture. Had a temperature at this time of 104, and yet he was still going out doing his show. When the show was over, boom, collapsed. They brought him to the hospital, Grace Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. Take a look. This is a picture of Grace Hospital. Tell me. Does that not look like the Adams Family House? I mean, you pull me up to that, I take a look at that, I go, forget it, I'm dead. That's it. I'm dead. Forget it. They bring Houdini inside the hospital, they examine him, they realize he's got a ruptured appendix. So they operate on him, they remove his appendix. Unfortunately, this was a time period before antibiotics. So his, his appendix had already ruptured, um, a poison that was building up called peritonitis, spreading throughout his body. They did not give Houdini much time to live at all. The doctors were not hopeful whatsoever. To their surprise, he kept holding on day after day after day. Uh, they didn't think he'd make it to the next morning and, and several days later he was still alive. On October 29th, a second operation was ordered. Uh, Houdini's condition was worsening. They gave him the second operation. I think this is where this experimental serum was used. And uh, strangely enough, Houdini's, uh, uh, he started to improve, believe it or not. Um, so much so that uh, he dictated a, a letter to, to a friend and um, he spent some time talking to his doctor who stayed by his bedside. This was the 29th of October. So if we fast forward to October 31st, it's about 1.20 in the afternoon. In Houdini's hospital room is his brother Hardeen, his brother Nathan, his sister Gladys, Bess is there, uh, the doctors and the nurses. The only one missing is his brother Leopold, who Houdini did not want there. They'd had a falling out. Um, Houdini's condition started to decline and go down. The doctors were checking his, his uh, pulse and his temperature and his heartbeat. Uh, he looked up at Hardeen and he said, I'm tired of fighting. I guess this thing's going to get me. And at 1.26 in the afternoon on October 31st, 1926, Harry Houdini, the world's greatest escape artist, passed away. Even though Houdini the man passed away, Houdini the legend began to grow. So much so that now in the year 2012, um, well, I'll just tell you what happened yesterday. I was out doing a performance, and in the middle of the show, I decided to ask a question to my audience. Um, how many people have ever heard of Harry Houdini? Every hand went up. So even today, 86 years after his death, 
he still remembered. And that's it for this episode of The Magic Detective Show. I'm your host, Dean Carnegie. If you'd like to find out more about magic history, please go check out my blog at themagicdetective.com. And you can read more about uh, the history of magic stories that I wrote. And also, uh, we're having a contest, a magic history contest that ends tomorrow, October 30th. So you still have an opportunity to, um, to enter. Uh, just answer as many questions as you can. If you don't get them all right, don't worry. I'll tell you the truth. Nobody so far of all the entries I've gotten, nobody has gotten them all right. So I'm still looking for uh, a possible winner. If you get them all right, you could be the one. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to have to go with who got the, the most uh, questions right. So check that out on themagicdetective.com. And, um, oh, and if you want to do this, go to my Facebook page, uh, the facebook.com slash themagicdetective. I think that's what it is. Just look up The Magic Detective in a Facebook search and you'll find us there. And You can like our page. And, uh, and if you could, subscribe right here to the channel, uh, The Magic Detective, so um, here on YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching the show. Hopefully we'll see you again next time. I'm Dean Carnegie. Take care. Bye-bye. So the last time we met, I told you about uh, uh, Gordon Lightfoot punching... So the last time we met, I told you about uh, G. Gordon. G, uh, <sighs> yeah.